Welcome back into the world of the Apostolate for Family Consecration. You've now had an opportunity to pray, to share, to grow as a community of believers, being immersed in the truth. We're back now with His Eminence, Carla Lorenzi, to give you a preview for your last week, your third week reading in Carla Lorenzi's book, Alone with God. Your Eminence, uh, we start off in chapter 13 with prayer. Uh, maybe you can give us a little summary of what's in that chapter. Prayer is a very important dimension of our union with God and our being at God's disposal for the apostolate and our own spiritual growth. What is prayer? It is to be with God, to give attention to God, to be open to God, to be at God's disposal. Christ himself is our model. The scripture often tells us that he prayed, that he was in union with his father. And his prayer periods were more protracted before major events, like when he chose the 12 apostles. We are told that he passed the whole night in prayer with his father. And when the crowd was going to take him to make him their king, after he multiplied loaves and fishes, he retired to a desert a, a mountain to pray. And at many other times, of course, the critical moment of his passion, he prayed. He gave us example. And we noticed that the saints have followed that example mm -hmm. all through the corridors of church history. And if anybody wants any negative proof of the importance of prayer, it is also enough to look through church history and find many casualties mm -hmm. among lay people, clerics, religious, who neglected prayer. Because prayer is like breathing. It is God who gives us life. If anybody neglects to breathe, that person ceases to live. Probably, instead of just talking about prayer in general, we can take elements. Mm -hmm. We spoke of one type of prayer earlier, liturgical prayer, the official prayer of the church. Right. That official prayer has three major parts, sacraments, various blessings, and the liturgy of the hours. Mm -hmm. Then there is a second group of prayers. We can call them communal prayer. Prayers we say with other people. They are generally written down in a book, a formula already written down. But they are not exactly the same as official prayers of the church, liturgical. Mm -hmm. Such prayers would be the litanies we see in many prayer books, approved mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. the rosary, uh, and there are many other such prayers. For such prayers, we will need the bishop's approval to make sure that the doctrine is orthodox because prayer and belief go hand in mm -hmm. hand. And if a prayer it might contain a lot of spiritual sugar, mm -hmm. but not solid matter. And it is for the bishop to look into that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if anybody is buying a prayer book, make sure that it has what is called the bishop's imprimatur, the bishop's authority. It may be printed. Mm -hmm. It is safe from faith and morals point of view. There is a third group of prayers. And I'm afraid that that's the one more neglected. Mm -hmm. And it does harm when it is not done. That means personal prayer. It is basic. Without personal prayer, our communal prayer and our liturgical prayer will fall short. Mm -hmm. Personal prayer is the prayer which comes from the individual as the individual. In that, everybody's prayer will be different from everybody else's because nobody is a carbon copy mm -hmm. of another person. It means really how I relate with God as an individual. It does not necessarily mean that I speak many words when I go before God, but it must mean that I give attention to God. It must mean that I listen to God Sometimes it will mean that I articulate, mm -hmm. I vocalize my, how I feel before God. Mm -hmm. When we go through all that, 
all that we will pray for will fall under four headings. The major purposes of religion. Religion is primarily adoration of God. Mm -hmm. Secondly, asking pardon for sins because we are sinners. Thirdly, thanksgiving. We have so many things to thank God about. And lastly, petition. Asking God for what we need. Unfortunately, many people, for them, prayer means only the fourth I one. I think you're right. Most of us are into the... Asking the only right. for what we need. Right. Rather uh -huh. than praising We and just be God. begging God, begging Him from mm -hmm. morning till evening. That right. is also prayer. Mm -hmm. But it is not the highest form of prayer. Right. We can look at the, our Father, which Christ gave us, the Son of God. He is mm -hmm. the, he is, uh, the <laughs> last word. Right. See how He arranges it. Mm -hmm. Our Father... Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom come. We haven't asked for anything right. for ourselves right. yet. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. We're just praising him. Mm -hmm. And then, because we are, we are creatures, give us this day mm -hmm. our daily bread. Right. Forgive us where we have offended. Help us to forgive others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's right. a model prayer. Oh, a prayer of praise. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men who are God's friends. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you. We, mm -hmm. You see the right. joy in it. Mm -hmm. All carried we are carried away by God. We are not thinking of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Of course, there is growth in prayer. A person doesn't reach the highest grade of prayer the very first day. Right. Uh -huh. A person doesn't go to school the first day and become president of a university. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So. Gradually, in part, divine providence for that individual, in part, um, the response right. of the individual. There are, of course, problems in prayer. Now, and some people have dry periods, don't they, where they just, so often you see people coming in fervent and on fire, but then all of a sudden they, they receive no consolations from prayer anymore. They're going through a a dry period, and maybe you can explain that that is to be expected. It is to be mm -hmm. expected. It is not a sign that the individual should stop praying. Mm -hmm. There is no time when we should stop praying. As Christ said, we ought always to pray and not to faint. Mm -hmm. But this spiritual dryness can occur out of many reasons. Sometimes the individual is responsible through negligences, through carelessness in preparation, or sometimes mm -hmm. the individual is not responsible at all. Mm -hmm. And that may more often be the case. Yes. It may be due to physical tiredness or sickness. The body is not really fit for the high act, which is prayer. Or it may be, according to divine providence, to bring that individual to a higher grade of prayer. Mm -hmm. Because these consolations are not the aim of prayer. We do not pray in order to get spiritual consolation. Okay. If God gives, we accept mm -hmm. with gratitude. But he may decide it is not good for us to get those consolations. He knows best. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the spiritual writers say that the dryness can come because God is bringing the individual to a higher grade of prayer. In the beginning, our prayer is mostly our activity. Mm -hmm. We are saying many things to God. Right. But as our love of God increases, we can almost say our familiarity with God increases, the soul becomes more and more um, at God's disposal. Mm -hmm. until the soul reaches a higher grade in which the individual in front of God is simply letting God go, mm -hmm. letting God have his way. And there may be consolation, there may not be consolation. 